Okay, here's a lesson on how to buy a used car. Probably one of the best lessons you'll ever get from David's farm. Because buying a used car is like choosing a girlfriend. You never know what you've got till it's too late. And then you're in it for the long time sometimes. So anyways, here goes. Okay, first is the overall visual impression. <laughs> Does it look beat up? Does it look rusty? Has it been repainted? Has it been in an accident? Well, here's a few tips to know. Of course, if there's a slight color mismatch, that panel's been repainted. Next thing is, look at all the edges around the vehicle, everywhere, for overspray. Where they didn't tape it quite right and a little bit of paint got on the trim, that's another way to tell you. Stand back and look down each side of the body for waves and ripples. If it's an older car, look to see if it's been repaired around the dog legs or wheel wells. Check to see that all the headlights and front end parts bumpers seem aligned. The door gaps, hood edge gaps and all that stuff look aligned properly. Then open and close all the doors. Make sure they align properly and shut nicely. Sweet. Next, check the mileage. See if the vehicle looks like it has as many miles as it's claiming to have. Lots of ways to kind of tell. If you're suspicious the miles have been turned back or the instrument cl cluster switched, look really close inside for fingerprints on the other side of the clear panel or on the black panel at the back or marks in the dust back there where it's been disturbed or even a random hair that shouldn't be in there. That's one way of telling. On Volkswagens they often turn around at 300,000 and start all over again so that's very confusing. Check the amount of wear on the brake pedal. Grab your door, lift it up and down a bit, see how much wear there is in the hinges. Look for a worn seat. High mileage seat, even if it's not worn through, is often wrinkly all over. Another thing to do is look for oil change stickers. Some could be mounted here, some along the edge of your windshield, or even under the hood. Make sure that the number on the oil change sticker is a lower number for kilometers or miles than what's displayed on the dash, or someone's definitely got some hanky-panky going on. Of course, instead of kicking the tires, check them all for even wear. Of course, if they're worn off on the corners on the front end, it's definitely got an alignment problem or worn out steering joints. Then check the front windshield for chips or cracks that might be starting. They always get bigger. Open the rad cap and make sure there's no oil floating in there. Motor oil could be leaking through the head gasket and getting in your antifreeze. And the transmission automatic cooler that's in your radiator could be leaking and putting transmission oil in your antifreeze. Check the color of the oil. Being black is no big deal, but just make sure it's not coffee colored or creamy colored or white. So that means you've maybe got head gasket problems too, or cracked head. Check the tranny oil. Well, if it's bright red and nice and clear, and doesn't have like a burnt smell to it, that's good news. It's hard to tell about batteries, but you can maybe get an idea looking at one. Sometimes they're dated. Now, most important, the engine. Start it up and listen to it. Listen for ticks, clicks, growling sounds, like could be a water pump or an alternator bearing going. And very most importantly, check the blow-by. All worn engines have blow-by, but if you see lots of colored smoke coming out of there, or it's going poof, 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 that means one or more cylinders have bad compression, or if there's just lots coming out, it means the engine's very high miles and tired. Some blow-by is okay, that's normal. Put your hand on the motor and see how smooth it runs. It's got a bad cylinder, it'll be going duh, 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 a little bit and a little bit of shake. You don't want that. If you can see the radiator, it's most important to check the bottom part because that's the part that salt and everything rots out. So you want to check, you know, your air conditioner radiator and your engine radiator. And for leakage too. Now the tailpipe is important too. There should always be something in there a tiny bit. But if you do that and there's lots of black and if it's not a diesel, that means it's not running right and it's burning way too much gas. Now this, this van's a diesel, so <laughs> that's normal. Next, start it up and turn the wheels all the way one direction, take a peek underneath, turn the wheels all the way the other direction, take a peek underneath. So if it's front wheel drive, what you're looking for is the condition of the CB boots, or constant velocity boots for cracks and grease coming out, because that's an extra expense. Check your struts or shocks for oily condition, that means leakage. That's bad, you know, got to get them changed soon. Check your transmission from the side view and underneath to see if it's leaking. Check brake flex hoses for cracks in them. Crawl underneath and look for major engine oil leaks, like rusted out oil pans or lots of oil leaking where the motor meets the transmission because that's called the rear main bear bearing seal. And that's the hardest and most expensive one to change. Some vehicles involve removing the motor and transmission or just the transmission to do that. While you're under here, look at the frame and everything to see it hasn't driven over curbs and rocks and all scuffed up and damaged. 
and then take a close look all underneath for how rusty the gas lines are, the brake lines are, how rusty the gas tank is. If it's got a metal gas tank, whether it's got damp spots where it's sweating and leaking, check the exhaust system, you know, rust and holes or parts replaced. Make sure it still has a catalytic converter on it or down the line someone's going to make you put one on. See that it has a spare tire. Check to see if the rear window wiper works, if it has one. Check the emergency brake. Horn. Also check to see how the tunage plays. Sweet. If it's got air conditioning, check that too. If all the air conditioning is on, and the compressor down below there, the clutch is clicking off and on fairly frequently, that means it's low on Freon. If it doesn't turn on at all, it means it's probably got no Freon because there's a switch that doesn't allow it to turn on and there's no Freon. Of course, look for leaks on the engine. Could be bad gaskets or seals. Ask when the timing belt's been changed, if that's appropriate, or, you know, that engine has one. Check to see that the driver's seat slides back and forth. If it's jammed, that often happens because the car was in an accident, and the mechanism is broken. See that there's no damage around the keyhole or outside door locks, meaning the vehicle could have been stolen and recovered. Now check the paperwork, like the ownership, or title. You want to be sure it wasn't a crash recovered and repaired vehicle, you know, one that was bought from an auto records or from an insurance company and fixed up. That's called a branded vehicle and it should be mentioned that it's branded, which means it has a lower value because the vehicle was a total write-off. Now take the vehicle out for a drive. You want to, of course, go on the highway, find a flat spot, let go of the steering wheel and see if it pulls hard, you know, to the right or left, meaning an alignment problem, or see if the steering wheel is shaking, meaning off balance or bent rims. Look for damage to the hubcaps or rims to see if it's hit a curb. Listen for howling sounds coming from the wheels, which means bad wheel bearings. Aim for another bad spot of the road with lots of potholes or cracks. Listen for noises coming out of the front end, which could be bad ball joints, bad shocks or struts, and it could be just simple things like bad stabilizer links, which are cheap and easy to change. Also be aware of noises coming from the rear end. Some cars have stabilizer links in the rear end, and of course they all have shocks. Accelerate hard and see that the motor is still running smooth and not starting to misfire. Get a good feel of how the transmission is shifting. Make sure there's no clunks when you put it in drive or reverse. Or no funny shifting sounds or patterns when you're driving. No slippage feelings. No whining sounds coming from the transmission. If the engine's kind of boggy and doesn't want to accelerate, the catalytic converter could be clogging up. If it's front wheel drive, take it slowly around some sharp corners with the steering turned all the way in either direction and listen for clicking sounds coming from the CV joints. If they're clicking, they can't be repaired, they have to be replaced. Do medium speed gentle turns in each direction and listen for humming noises coming from the front wheels. That'll also tell you that your wheel bearings are getting close to going bad because sometimes they don't always hum in a straight line. Check the lights in the dashboard, that your airbag light's not on, your engine light's not on, and your ABS brake light's not on, of course, and check the oil pressure if it has those particular gauges and temperature while you're driving. Well, now if you like the vehicle, hopefully you've done your research on that model of vehicle and you know how much it's worth, or how much it should be worth, and start to do your dealing with the person and try to work out a price that you think is reasonable. If you buy a car from a car dealer, you're likely paying $1,000 more or more than you could get it for privately or for some other kind of deal like that, and you're paying more taxes and fees, but you might actually get a warranty so sometimes that's worth the extra money. You can also find out if the vehicle still has some factory warranty on it or extended warranty someone may have purchased. It's not really that important that it was a one owner vehicle. The one advantage of having more than one owner is that every time it changed hands, the new owner usually got more stuff fixed on it. Sometimes one owner vehicles have so many things lacking in repair. If you search sites on the internet, you can find out what kind of problems that particular vehicle could have, like the history of intake manifold gaskets or head gaskets, air conditioning leaks, you know, whether the transmissions have a tendency to go bad in those vehicles. So learn all those things first, then take a look and ask questions. You can also go to car auctions and buy vehicles. That's how I bought this particular maroon van. I got lucky, got it really cheap, but you never know you're taking a chance because at a car auction you can only see it running as it's just driving past you, but you can't actually go for a drive and test all those other things I mentioned. So if you do want to buy one from a car auction, Know what you're doing, or take someone with you has, who has some experience, because you actually could save another thousand dollars compared to buying it privately. More kitties, gee. So that's most of what you should know. This may be one of the most valuable lessons you'll ever get off YouTube. Certainly will help everybody else who watches this video. And finally, and maybe most important is, do your research and find out if there's any money owing on the vehicle. If you buy it, and there's money owing on it, you could very well be stuck with someone else's debt, and have a debt collector take the car away from you, 
or you have to pay their debt back. So good luck.